Hi, I'm Louise Dempsey from the Literacy Place. This video is a useful spelling rule um, and it's video one. We're going to make a series of these just sharing what you hopefully will find useful rules for yourself to help you understand a bit more about the alphabetical code, but also rules and tips you can give your kids to make their spelling a little bit more uh, achievable for them. This session is going to be about the letter C because we all know it makes two sounds, two phonemes. It usually makes a K phoneme, but there are times when it makes the S phoneme. I found this rule super useful because when I taught juniors, I didn't know what the reason was. I just told them that it usually made a K. So K was their, a C was their best guess for K. Um, and when they're reading, it was the best guess as well. But sometimes it could make a S. Now, the difficult thing about that is when's the sometimes how's that going to help kids to know when to use it so below is a list of words I always use investigation with kids trying to get them to really get curious about words develop that word consciousness so you might want to give the kids a set of words like this and see if they can work out why is the um, C making a K with a word like cat and cone and cut but making a S with celery and city so pause the video and see if you can work out what the rule might be So you might have noticed it had to do with the vowel after it. Um, and I just got the uh, little vowel card up there, which is available on our website. Um, and just as a reminder that not all kids know the vowels um, and not all kids know that every word has to have a vowel um, and that sometimes that could be a Y instead of the vowel. And a lot of kids aren't that clear on the short sound that each vowel makes and then the fact that it also has a long sound. So I'm just dropping that in as a little reminder just to check in before you start talking about vowels that your kids know what they are. Um, so you might notice that uh, when it's followed by an A and an O and a U, it makes the K phoneme. And when it's followed by the E and the I, it makes the S phoneme. What I would do with kids is then a little investigation. So give them a word sort and get them to think about it. So if, um, if we think of other words, does that rule still follow? So can we think of another word that goes C-A and does it still make a K sound? Yep, I can think of cat, that works. You might be thinking of other words, hopefully they work as well. What about the CE? Are we still going to get the S phoneme? Yep, sense does. What about CI? Does it make the S sound still? Yep, civil does. What about CO? Are we back to K again? We are coin. And what about the CU words? That works as well, cup. So hopefully kids could add extra words to that grid and realize that that is a good rule. Um, now, there are always exceptions. I used to get really freaked out by exceptions when I was a younger teacher. Um, when I did my training in spelling, I was taught that about 80% of words follow rules and about 20% don't. And those 20% of words are usually either modern words or they come from another language. So it's got to do with their word origin. And just see those as fun things to explore with the kids, you know, it's just get them to look for exceptions and look up those words and find out where they come from and why they might have a different spelling. But hopefully that rule will fit for a lot of the, the words that you put into that grid. So let's think about CY words, because that's another kind of spelling that we can have. Um, so what happens if you put a Y after a C? Does it make a K or a S sound? So here's a few words. And hopefully you're seeing that, yep, it, it works. Yeah, cycle and cynic and cyclone and cyber, it makes the S phoneme. So here's the spelling rule, and this can be downloaded from our website, The Literacy Place, um, so you could share this with kids, but get them to work it out first of all, and then you can share this as a summary of it. So the letter C can make the phoneme K or S, depending on the vowel that follows, and has the summary down the bottom. What about um, other consonants that go after the C? Because we can put some other consonants as well as the vowel. So I always pull out an alphabet card at this stage and I go through and just check out for myself which consonants can go after the C. So you might want to pause the video and think about that. So hopefully you've worked out that you can put an L after the C. Does it make a K or a S? Let's have a think about that. Click still makes a K, doesn't it? What about the R? That can also go after the C. We have a cr sound, so it still makes the K. And one that does change is the H. If we put the H after the C, we now have a different sound. And that's because the CH together is a what we call a digraph. So two letters are making a new sound, CH. They're no longer making K 
H, they're making a new sound, which is ch. So when we put the C and the H together, we get a different sound. We get a ch sound. And that's good for the kids to explore as well. What about then if I am writing and I have a word that goes k and then it has an I or an E or a Y, how do I make that if I don't use the C? What letter do I use? And hopefully kids will work this out pretty quickly. Um, so if we have, um, we want to make a k sound um, and then it's followed by the I, E or Y, we need to use the K. So there's some words there. I explored some, some KY words and I couldn't find many um, and most of them are actually proper nouns like the name K. Kyle, but it did work for that as well. That's all from me. I hope that was a useful uh, investigation into the letter C and its different phonemes. Check out our um, Facebook page for other ideas um, and other video clips on our YouTube channel as well. Bye for now.